Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. They couldn't quite complete the sweep. Too bad, but we're going to get into everything. Also, a ton of news throughout the entirety of the MLB. A lot, a lot, a lot to go over. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, well, well. You know, we were saying this might be the time the Blue Jays get a series sweep. It couldn't quite come to fruition. But I think... Overall, we saw some signs of life in this series, and I think that's the big part. Uh, Carter, me and you, we were debating which games the Blue Jays would win and lose. I'm not going to, you know, the Blue Jays might have not gotten a sweep, but I sure did. Yeah, you got it exactly right, actually. You had uh, the Bassett win, Brios win, and then unfortunately with a Kikuchi loss. And then I had a Chris Bassett loss and a Kikuchi win. So that brings you up to 6-4, actually. Or is it, no, actually, it's 8-6. You're up two. It's Ooh. 8-6 for you, so... A perfect sweep for you. First time uh, of the year for that. So congratulations to Braden. I guess uh, for that win, even though I took uh, the bigger win in NHL fantasy a couple weeks ago. So uh, you're up in this series, but uh, there's no not as much money on the line. So uh, definitely not as big of a, of a win for you, unfortunately. Yeah, just before we continue going any fur- further, make sure you guys follow me and Carter both on Twitter at Braden Five Wasco at Carter First Two. You can also uh, go follow our Instagram and our TikTok at Locked on Blue Jays. And we notice a lot of you guys aren't subscribed. So it really helps us out if you guys can hit that subscribe button. It puts us right at the top of your feed. You can see all the information on the Blue Jays, MLB, etc. We do try to cover a little bit of MLB stuff if uh, if we find it interesting, just because we're not just fans of the Blue Jays. We're also baseball fans in general. So when something piques our interest, we go after it and we talk about it. Um, but yeah, Carter, just as an overall series here, uh, how, how, how did you feel about it? Were you, did this sort of bring you back? I know I put out a tweet and I think I asked, are we back after the second game? And then the third game, you know, I, I deserved, uh, I deserved for this to happen because I put that tweet out, I think. Yeah. I said that I'd be all the way back in if the Blue Jays swept the series. Didn't end up happening. Did uh, not see too much from the bats again this game. Then again, Logan Gilbert is a good pitcher. We did uh, have some great offensive performances against George Kirby and, uh, Luis Castillo. So those are it's a pretty tough pitching series. So overall, I think you gotta be happy with this, especially after the Blue Jays started the first 10 games. Two out of three from the Mariners, a good pitching staff, not as good uh, from the plate, but you still have guys like Julio Rodriguez, uh, Ty France is there, obviously Mitch Hanniger. Guys, they still have guys that are competitive at bats here. So this team is definitely not uh, a joke of a team whatsoever. But uh today, yeah, like you say Kikuchi, my biggest takeaway from today is the was the pitching duel, actually. Uh, Yusei Kikuchi looked unbelievable again. That fastball is looking lively. He's throwing a lot of curveballs, and it's working pretty well. I know Kikuchi today, he had eight strikeouts through the first three and a third innings, which was absolutely ridiculous. So, I mean, like eight out of eight strikeouts out of 10 outs. Like, are you kidding me? And then again, I think he only ended up getting one more than the, the rest of the game. But uh, I was a little worried there because the Blue Jays were making Logan Gilbert look like uh, prime Cy Young again. Vladdy ended up launching a moon ball off of him, but uh, unfortunately not enough to get uh, it done today. I- I'm okay with the series. I mean, 2-1. You got a Colorado Rocky series that I think is a must win. But uh, overall for this series, I think it was a much needed series win for the Toronto Blue Jays and a much needed bounce back series. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and Kikuchi, you know what? I-, I always say hammer the Kikuchi over strikeouts because they always underestimate them. And I think throughout this season, you'll see that you can maybe make some money on some fan tool or whatever you bet on. If it's prize picks, the over on Kikuchi strikeouts is the way to go. I hammered it today and it paid off for me. Uh, and I'll continue to do that. Every time he's up, I'm betting on Kikuchi because he is just electric and he brings his best stuff. Um, and he always seems to be able to work out of things too. It, because he's such a high velocity or high impact strikeout guy that if he has runners on base, sometimes he can get out of it just by striking guys out. He doesn't, he doesn't give up a too, uh, too many sack flies or, or sacrifice plays when he's 
pitching because he strikes out a ton. Um, just going over some of the other stats for today that, you know, maybe some standouts, Justin Turner, again, this guy just looks unbelievable this season. He, he's doing everything that we needed him to do. This is the why we brought him in. He looks like a real pro and a real vet, and that's exactly what we needed. Vladdy, of course, one for four with the bomb, uh, the Carter first uh, statistic, one for four with the bomb, and you're good to go. Uh, Kevin Biggio, one for three, pretty decent enough day. Uh, Kirk, another brutal performance from him. Same with, uh, I know I was sort of saying that Kiermaier's at bat started to look better last episode and they looked horrible. He did a complete 180 today because he did not have a pulse at the plate whatsoever. All yeah. Logan Gilbert had to do was throw a slider low in the zone. It, it, yeah. Honestly, in the dirt, he was swinging at everything. It, yeah, was, it was not good for Kevin Kiermaier. But like I said last episode, you're not really looking for a ton of offensive upside for Kevin Kiermaier, but you probably do want to see him put a ball or two in play instead of striking yeah. out. And pretty much every single at bat. So uh Dalton Varsho, uh, you know, he hits uh he hit what was that? That was the double, right? I believe. Um, I think it was just a single. Or it was Varsho. just a single. Yeah, yeah it, w- it was going to the gap, didn't quite pull I think it was off the opposite field single. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm trying to be positive about Dalton Varsho. I don't wanna don't want to get into him too much, and I'm not gonna get into the numbers as much today. It's gonna be more of a tomorrow thing. But uh, I guess I'll just leave Varsho. Uh, I'm going to give him some more time because right now I don't have a lot of positives to say about him. So, yeah, yeah. You know, but that's what we could say about a lot of guys in this team. Yeah, we had two games where everybody was sort of starting to look better. But overall, this season, they just have not shown up. Carter, I know you have a couple really big points that you want to hit on today's game. So I'll throw it to you to kick some of those off. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to Kikuchi. Uh I think an unbelievable performance. The fact he even gave up a run was kind of unfortunate for him. This walked uh, Dylan Moore, ended up stealing a base. Kirk with the uh, pretty bad pop time again, not going to throw out a speedy guy like Dylan Moore. Yeah. And then J.P. Crawford. There's two guys in the Mariners that like really tick me off. J.P. Crawford is one of them because the way he gets RBIs and the way he scores runs, seems the, the hits he gets in clutch situations are just ridiculous. A huge, a really nice uh, fastball, I believe it was, on the inside park, J.B. Crawford. And it looks like he's literally taking like a golf swing at this ball. Yeah. And somehow he just kind of muscles it into center field. Or it, it was right field in front of George Springer and uh, falls for him. So that was unfortunate. But yeah, Kikuchi, through the, I thought he was going to have 15 strikeouts through the first uh Well, he was on pace. Innings. He was, he on, was pace. on pace. <laughs> he was on pace for about 20. I actually tweeted that. I said, is Kikuchi going to throw 20 strikeouts today? Obviously didn't end up happening. But, uh, yeah, that Vladimir Guerrero home run. Up until that point, uh, the Blue Jays didn't really do a whole lot. You had a Kevin Vigio bloop single. Bo Bichette, I mean, hammered that ball opposite field. But with Bo Bichette, it's a single. It's nice, but, again, singles aren't going to really win you ball games, especially when you're not getting the hitting behind. But then Vladdy comes up and uh, changes the game. I actually thought uh, the Blue Jays were going to take the momentum and end up winning that game. 459 feet. This guy is cranking home runs this year his first one was what 450 now 459 this one actually is a top five distance home run for vladdy in his entire career and it didn't sound like it was top three so i didn't actually look into what his top home runs were but this is either four or five so i think uh for next episode i actually want to see how far vladdy's farthest home run is maybe leave a comment if uh, you want to take a guess and i'll uh i'll give the number tomorrow or maybe you guys know maybe you guys are just dialed in on the vladdy launch balls and i should be as well but moving into the ninth inning is really what I wanted to get into in this game. Because you get Vladdy tying it up. You think you have momentum. And you have a pretty good start to the inning. Uh, you get, I think, Dalton Varsha was the one that got on there. I, I could be mixing that up. But uh, the, big, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, the Vogi at bat and the Kevin Biggio at bat. You have Kevin Biggio coming up to the plate. I think it's a slider in the dirt from Munoz. This pitch, is, like we said right away, there's no way it hit Kevin Biggio. Like, we're like, there's no yeah. shot. That was a good yeah, yeah. for sure. I don't know how they missed the call. I thought it was almost Angel Hernandez behind the plate. But the fact that they didn't even challenge it was what I was really surprised about. In a game that was a 1-1 one, uh, one, one game, bottom of the ninth, you already had a runner on first. This made a runner on first and second with, I believe, one out. That's a huge turning point in the game. So I was just very surprised that uh, Seattle was confident enough in Munoz, and maybe they just had a little bit of sleeping in that dugout. I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah. uh, I think that's a play you got to challenge. I, yeah, I, I I was shocked because we when he got hit, like we didn't even think that he got hit. So the the ball, whatever, and then we see him start take stuff up. We're like, I don't think he was hit there. And then they showed the replay, and it bounced like it was probably like four or five inches yeah. to by his foot. But it's like holy moly, like 
I don't know what there was zero reaction. Like Cadman, good on you for selling that, but that you did not get touched by that baseball. Maybe it hit the gravel beside your foot and kicked a rock at you or something. See, but, I think yeah. that's, maybe that's what it was. Maybe the ump was just the, all the gravel kicked up. It was close enough and he just yeah. uh, wanted to help the blue Jays out for a team that uh, wasn't really coming up with a lot of timely hits. And then um, I just, with the bogey at bat, nothing too crazy there, but I just thought it was hilarious how he did his little bat flip on that walk he had. I just thought the, the style he had was uh, pretty funny there. And then just Ernie Clement, uh, it's tough, uh, tough spot for him. Bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, can't come through. And then obviously you have uh, the 10th inning where you're just a depleted bullpen at that point. You got to rely on Mitch White, which is uh, a little bit unfortunate. And then you had Tim Meza, who has surprisingly been not great this year. We're going to get into that more on next episode. But yeah, you go down 6-1 in the top of the ninth or top of the 10th. You're, you're not winning that baseball game, unfortunately. No, no. I mean, I'll be like, we, uh, we were sort of Joe. I sort of said something jokingly. I said, okay, well, I'll just need the rally here. And uh, yeah, not so much with this team showing zero pulse all game besides pretty much flat. Um, you knew that, that this was sort of a write-off too bad. But you know what? The Blue Jays did get two out of three. Um, there's one more thing that I know you wanted to bring up, and I was pretty fired up to see this, and that was when Daniel Vogelback bat flipped a walk. Yeah, I, I sort of, I slowly brought that up a little bit on, on already, but uh, yeah, that bat flip was so funny. He uh, he just takes that pitch, just absolutely spits on it, and just a little. So. Yeah, I. You know what? Watching that guy run down to first base after bat flipping a walk might have been the all-time Blue Jays moment. Never mind the Batista bat flip. It's it's when Daniel Vogelback gets walked and bat flips and does his little jog over there to first, gets the first base. And I, I was joking. I said, are they going to pinch run him? Oh, 100% they sure were, yeah. Enough, they pinch run him. So he starts doing his little... His little jaunt back to the dugout. So funny. It was the, you know what? It's, it's moments like that that you love baseball. It's just so good. Oh, and Vogie's such a character, too. It's definitely nice to have a couple players on the team. A guy that's probably not going to make a huge impact this season just for a lack of uh, playing opportunity. Definitely hurts him not playing the position. Kind of tough to just throw him in at DH. But the last thing I wanted to get in uh, this segment was Cal Rowley. This guy is like, it's it's like, he reminds me of Ryan Mountcastle when we play the Orioles. He just is a Jays killer. They said it on the broadcast today, and uh, I think there was a tweet about it. I can't remember exactly who it was. I think it was Shai Davidi. But um, he's played 15 games against the Toronto Blue Jays. He has nine home runs in those 15 games. It seems like if there's a big at-bat and Cal Raleigh comes up, probably seventh inning or later, just walk the guy. Like, he's just killing us every single time. A home run again off of Tim Meza that point i was pretty sure that the game was out of reach but then obviously mitch white comes in and definitely puts the game out of reach but uh how do you feel about cal rally just uh having his way with the toronto blue jays yeah i mean not great honestly <laughs> don't feel good about it but uh no i mean you know what there's some guys in the league where they just have their teams that they play really well against i don't know if it's timing if it's whatever comfortability um he's just a guy that has it against us and honestly I mean, you got to pitch to him. It's you, you're not going to look at the statistics. You got to believe in your guys. It's it's too bad with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson out that this bullpen is a tad depleted at this point. I think having this off day uh, today is going to be a really good thing for this team, just to sort of help out some of those arms. And you know, then we can use those guys because Swanson and Romano should be back this weekend. Fingers crossed. Um, we'll see. But yeah, at the end of the day, I mean. I don't know, extras, it, moments like that stuff's going to happen. If it's sometimes it's going to happen for uh, for the Blue Jays, sometimes it's not, and it goes against us. And today was one of those days. So this game really, for me, could have gone either way. I didn't think any both teams were playing very well at all offensively. So this was a bit of a coin flip game. Oh, I agree. And speaking of Kyle Rowley, he had some interesting comments about uh, Toronto Blue Jays general manager, John Schneider, and just about uh, how the Seattle Mariners feel about uh, some of the things he said and just uh, how they're approaching the Seattle Mariners from a pitching standpoint. So we're going to get into that after this. Today's episode brought to you by Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars of coverage. 
Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Carter, I know this is something maybe that doesn't affect us quite of quite right now as we think, but when we're looking at our families and stuff like that, you know, maybe this is something that we have to look into to really get our families going on too. It's it's never it's it's never you never want to start too late, right? Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurances in just a few clicks. Your work, your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you the unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. Thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found their best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. Take care of all your vehicular maintenance needs with our partner, eBay Motors. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your vehicle, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your partner's guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. No, I've said this story on the podcast multiple times. I had this uh, this uh, minivan I used to drive around. It was the first one of my grade to have the license. Thanks to eBay Motors, I was able to drive my friends around, kind of beat that thing up a little bit more than it already was beat up. Definitely a great first vehicle for me because uh, I had my fair share of uh, bumps and bruises with that thing uh, to start out my driving career. So if you want to uh, take advantage of uh, eBay Motors uh, deals for you guys, if you want to keep your ride or die alive on the road, you can just go to ebaymotors.com. Eligible items apply. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available for U.S. customers. So, Carter, Cal Rally, not a fan of the Blue Jays a whole lot. And you know what? It's reciprocated. The Blue Jays aren't a big fan of Cal Rally. So what was he saying about John Schneider? Yeah, this uh, goes back, obviously, Cal Rally, a uh, huge home run in the top of the 10th today to pretty much seal a game against the Toronto Blue Jays. Again, we went over his history with the Blue Jays. Seems to kind of be a Blue Jays killer. But Rally actually called out the Jays manager, John Schneider, and uh, said a little bit uh, regarding his comments last April. So John Schneider last April, when he was talking about the Mariners said that Cal rally was not very tough to pitch to when you execute your pitches. And I think he also said like this uh, regarding a few other players on the team, but mainly singled out Cal rally. So this is what Cal rally goes on to say. He says, I know a lot of guys have beef with them in the league. So his comments aren't surprising. I don't have much to say. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. If you don't want it to come back on you. So it's kind of interesting, actually, from Rally. It seems like uh, this is a little bit unwarranted, I guess you could say. For what I'm getting from this article is that this was last April, so last year. So I guess he's uh, he's been thinking about this. It's been on his mind for uh, the last year already, if uh, he's bringing it out uh, today anyway. You know what? This is just something ridiculous. Like, John Schneider makes a point of trying to back his team, saying that, like, to me, what that comment means is, our pitchers aren't locating. When you leave pitches over the heart of the plate, doesn't matter who it is, is going to take advantage of those pitches. Now, obviously, when a guy gets called out by name, it's probably going to start something with him. Or a lot of guys are so competitive that anything that's said about them, they're going to take as fuel, right, into the games. And obviously, he did. And it worked out for him. Um, to not be a fan of John Schneider from a non-fan perspective is crazy. Because you know what, he is a player's manager. He, he he's tight with his, you know, he's good with the group of guys that he has uh, in the locker room. Uh, Cal Cal Rally, I mean, I I don't know, dude, just chill out a little bit. Like it is like again, it's not life or death. The guy said you're you you hit pitches. He just said you if you pitch well against them, you're gonna shut them down. And I I don't think that's the most insane statement in the world. 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, and you're singling out in this scenario, you call out Kyle Rowley, uh, you single him out personally, and you do say like it is more so team orientated. But when you single out Kyle Rowley and you say it's not very tough to pitch when you execute your pitches. So it's pretty much saying if his pitchers are on, Kyle Rowley has no chance. I can kind of see why he'd be upset about this. Uh, for me, it's just uh, I didn't really hear much about this last season. I know there was a little bit of bad blood ever since uh, the game that we don't like to talk about on this podcast and that uh, playoff series. But uh, why bring it up a year later? Like, yeah, you did damage. Yeah, yeah you won your team the game. But it's, uh, it's a little interesting how you pick the one game out of three you win and the one game you hit a clutch home run. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But the first thing I thought of when I read this article was John Schneider calling Aaron Boone fat boy on the New York Yankees. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. I could definitely see how uh, other teams would not like John Schneider as manager, but as Blue Jays, as a Blue Jays fan covering this team every day, I love it, honestly. I mean, this just makes the Seattle Mariners series more electric. It gets the emotions going a little bit more. Maybe uh, something entertaining will happen uh, when we go to Seattle to play the Mariners. I think it's in July, so we got a little bit to wait, but uh, maybe there will be some fireworks going off against the Mariners. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. It's it's always interesting when you get these like little in-season rivalries that start from something that like who cares about and then but it adds to it. It adds to the whole, you know, spectacle of baseball, right? The love for the game that some of these guys have. It's when they get called out, yeah, they're going to try to respond and and Cal Rally to his credit did respond. So good for him, I guess in one of the three yeah games. i guess i guess one out of three is good we're taking that as wins now so if we if you win one out of three you can call out uh other teams that's, that's he, right seems like he's taking a book or a page out of alec manoa's book and uh doesn't doesn't really turn out too well uh i, I like when Vladdy. i mean you get the uh this year was just the trailer quote you get the alec manoa stuff all that stuff hasn't turned out well for Toronto blue jays players yeah. so i think with cal rally i think he took a good approach not saying a whole lot but the fact that he did even talk about it means that it's definitely on his mind so uh, it's, it's going to be interesting down the stretch, hopefully. Uh, and who knows, maybe uh, with tempers flared and emotions getting high, we'll see a Kirk and uh, rally tussle sometime throughout the season. Jesus. Imagine Kirk sitting on you. Oh, my God. Imagine Crush Kirk me. mad. I don't think I could see that guy, like, picture him mad. So if you uh, did something to piss Kirk off, uh, I, I, I don't know if I want to be in his way. That's like that's like a bull when it sees red right there. When you see that guy when he gets moving, holy crap, he is quick. You take the good tell he puts in the, the effort. He could take down the Great Wall of China when he starts moving. I love anyway. seeing Kirky run, though. He's uh, He definitely tries his hardest, and that's he, uh, all you can ask for. So He, he does. He does. <laughs> well, debatable lately, but okay. Well, he tries his hardest running around the bases. Oh, Maybe, there it is. I don't know if he's trying his hardest at the plate because some of his at-bats as well have uh, not been great. It's it's For me, it's a really like 50-50 split on this team right now. It's either they're playing horrible or like I'm seeing some nice things. Like you got like Kevin Biggio, Justin Turner – Vladdy's having some okay at bats. I think Boba Shett's starting to pick it up a little bit. But then you have guys like Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, some of these players just uh, not really liking what I'm seeing. Kevin Kiermeyer's another one, not yeah, great. Well, so, uh, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> not, not great to say the least. So uh, after this, we have uh, some Buck Martinez interesting quotes to say the least. I think this is the first quote that I've seen from Buck Martinez this year that's caught my eye, which is pretty good for Buck Martinez considering it's been 12 games in the season. 13 being today. So we're going to get into uh, what he said and uh, our reactions to it after this. And today's episode, of course, brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing as well, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose carter this might be the time where we get you going on fanduel because holy moly what a deal it is bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to easy slam dunks all on an app that is safe secure and easy to use that's my biggest thing with any of these uh, gambling sites betting sites it's it's knowing having the peace of mind that your money is safe nothing's being taken advantage of and FanDuel is that place. I 100% trust them. I 100% uh, love their services. Their pre-made parlays are my go-to. Yeah, I absolutely you, love it. You got to be loving them when it's uh, making you money. You're on a, quite the roll. I don't know if it's because of you or these uh, pre-made parlays. Maybe a little bit of both. But uh, I, I might don't as well ride up with FanDuel. We're rolling. We're rolling. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Buck, 
Buck, Buck. All right, Carter. I know you're fired up about what Buck said. I know you're. We're, I think we're gonna have opposite takes here. I hate to say it. I think we're gonna have opposite takes. Let us know what he said. Yeah, it, this actually happened in yesterday's game or the game day before. So today, as we're recording this, is Wednesday. This happened on the Tuesday game. But uh, we just ran out of time to talk about it. Uh, just uh, Toronto Blue Jays winning a game. I guess it kind of went over our heads a little bit. But we got some time today. So I wrote down this quote as soon as it happened because I'm like, I don't really understand what this guy's talking about. But uh, I'll just get into it here. So Buck says, doubles keep the pitcher in a jam. Home runs don't keep a guy on base. Doubles, there's a guy in scoring position. So there was a little bit of lead up to towards this. So uh, I guess I could provide a little bit of a backstory. So he was talking about the Blue Jays' lack of being able to keep a rally going, get hits back to back to back. So pretty much what he's saying is we hit a home run, the pitcher has nothing to think about. So like the bases are clear. It's kind of like a reset in a sense. When you hit a double, there's a guy right behind you who's in scoring position. There's a threat on the bases. Another thing to think about. And just when you have a guy on base, it's a lot. it inspires people to start hitting. It inspires rallies. But what I'm saying from this is, why are you not taking a home run over a double? Aren't the home runs the goal? Like if you're, again, when if you want a huge nine run inning, yeah, maybe you take a more doubles than home runs. But with the Toronto Blue Jays, runs are tough to come by. So if we have a spot where you're going to have a home run instead of a double, I'm taking a home run 100 times out of 100. I don't know if you're on my side here. Maybe I'm misinterpreting what Buck was trying to say a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm not on his side here. I don't think you're misinterpreting it, but a little bit of me agrees with him. I, I think that when you're talking about a rally and you're needing to score runs, Buck said rally. So when you're needing a rally and a, and a decent amount of runs, when when guys hit home runs, it, it does. It, it gives you that reset. Say it's a two out game or two outs and, and you're needing to keep things going. Weirdly enough, keeping that runner on base, put something else in the head of the pitcher, it probably, you know, it still feels like there's work to need to be done. Sometimes when guys go out and hit the big ball, it it it, it then like like you sort of said, it's a reset. And um, yeah, if it's a you know one two run game, whatever, or it's the fourth inning, you'll take a home run any any day that you can get it. But in a situation where you need a rally, those doubles and singles into the gap, stuff like that, I think that's what really drives a rally and you need to keep guys going, keep guys on base, putting something in the head of the hitter for one that, okay, that guy's there. If I only get a single, he can drive him in where it's like, if you're talking about a rally and a guy's up at the plate and you know, he's maybe thinking I got to go for the big blast. No, in, in a, in a rally situation, a single and a double keeps the line moving. You pass the baton, you keep things rolling. And so it, uh, in that situation, I agree with what Buck said. And I, I knew we were sort of going to have a little bit of a head to head on this one, but see, my thing with this is that in the situation in the game, like, yeah, if you're down five runs, a solo shot, isn't going to do anything. Obviously. I think you do need the, the hits at that point. It is nicer to get a string of hits, but in this situation, I'm pretty sure, I don't know exactly when it was, but the blue Jays were up in the game for sure. We're at least up three, nothing. I'm not sure if the IKF double happened or not, but the blue Jays are up three, nothing. And that's in that situation, you don't really need a rally because you're already up. So I'm taking a home run. I'm taking the sure runs a hundred times out of a hundred rather than a double. And then knowing the Jays, you get a runner in scoring position and you get nothing else out of that. So yeah, sure. if you're down in the game, hundred percent, you do need the hits. A home run is not going to do anything, but if you're up, I'm taking the sure runs. Yeah. It's, it's very situational. So I agree with Buck in the sense of it's the eighth or ninth inning. You're, you're starting to get that rally moving. A home run might end that, that, um, that pace that you, that you've been setting. Um, and I do understand from that from that side. So it is weird to know where he was coming from on this one, uh, just which what he was really talking about, or is it overall? It's there, there's a lot that goes into you know every play in baseball, not just you know I would take a, a for sure run or I would take a double, whatever it is. There's a lot that goes into this. It's the situation, it's the pitcher, it's the hitter, it's it's what your team is built like. There's so many things that go into this. So in a sense, I agree with Buck. If you're down runs late in the game and you need to keep things moving, I think the double, the single, to keep the guys on base, I think I think it just adds a little bit of pressure. Whereas when you give up the home run and say you're down three, you get a home run, and then you got to start almost – it feels like you're almost starting from scratch again. So, it, But it, in, if you're in the middle of the game, it's a 2-1 game, a home run is – you need it. You'll take it anytime you can get it. So it's, it's situational. 
Yeah, and in a 3-1 game, again, this is a it's a tough talking point in this situational for sure, but you're down 3-1 and say you got like Josh Hader on the mound from the Astros, you get a solo shot. Isn't that not firing you up just as much as that double would? I guess with that double, you always have that threat of, oh, we can tie the game. We That's can tie right. the game. But yeah. if you hit a home run every at bat after that, you only need a home run to tie the game anyway. For That's sure. I think, I, where I, think, we're... I think it's a mental thing, to be honest with you, in most players. I know even I, I do the same thing. In it's hilarious. In well, yeah, you're giving show, up doubles left and right like crazy. So you're definitely accustomed to that. In in MLB the show, I do the same sort of thing where it's like, okay, say I'm down four runs, I hit a home run, and I think. I'm not hitting two more home runs, but if I'm getting, you know, a blue pit here, I double into the gap. It's like, okay, I'm starting to feel it. I'm getting onto this guy. It's not, it wasn't just one pitch that I got a hold of. And so I think that's, um, it's part of the mental game of, of the game. And, and I was even think back to when, when I played, you know, in high school and, and everything like that, whereas when we had those rallies going, it wasn't just the one guy who goes up there, gets a the job done. Everybody comes back out. It's, it's, you feel like a team. You feel like everybody's involved. You feel like everybody's doing their part. And I think that's huge for the mindset of a ball team. Yeah, definitely a debatable topic. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section. For this scenario, we'll be down 3-1 in the ninth inning. Tell me if you'd rather have a double and string of hits or would you rather have a solo shot to start your rally? Comment that if you're on my side or Brain's side. Always fun to debate about these Toronto Blue Jays topics or topics in general about baseball. Just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. And before we do head out, I wanted to throw it over to our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. One of the best times of the year to be a sports fan with all of our experts covering pretty much every sport that is going on right now. So if you want to be more knowledgeable in your sport of interest, just go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever 24-7 streaming channel. The Blue Jays have an off day tomorrow, but they will have Colorado on Friday. And we're a weekend series. I think that's a must-win series. We'll kind of get into that more on Friday's episode. As for today, Braden, you got anything else to add? No, just make sure you guys drop a sub. It helps us out. We're rolling. You know, we're we're trying to keep pushing these subs. It you know reaching more more of an audience because we we love it. When we did that live, it was so much fun. We got to interact with everybody. We had a blast, and we want to do more of that. And and by doing more of that, it's it's reaching more people. And 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 the nice thing is, is a lot of you that that comment and and like our videos um it's it's nice it sort of feels like you guys have been here from the start so that's that's a huge component for us too we really appreciate uh everything that you guys have done for us so far yeah we got to pick a series either at the end of april or sometime coming up maybe like a yankee series garrett cole's first time pitching maybe the dodgers come to town we'll pick another time a good series to watch and we'll uh, go live after the game but uh thank you guys for watching we always appreciate the support and we will see you guys tomorrow